All right, one of the next things we might want to do is extract our words and our engrams from the text itself. So again, we can expand our text analytics to see what we have. And that's the very next pill in our list. So extract engram features from text. So the data set's going to go here. And you'll notice we have another input port called input vocabulary, which allows us to bring in a pre-existing vocabulary that's been built. It may have been built from a previous run of extract engram features, uh, or it could be some other vocabulary that we feed in. I'll click on edit column, and again, we have a single column that we're going to use in this one. Remember, we want to use the pre-processed text, so I will save that. And then we've got a number of options here. I can, uh, because I don't have a pre-existing vocabulary, I'm going to create a vocabulary based on the text that we run into. But I could uh, put this in read-only mode, and if I already have a vocabulary coming in, that would allow me to code my new text with the features that are in that existing vocabulary. So. I would then just be able to use those existing features and code this into them rather than creating new ones. Now, if I bring in an existing vocabulary and then also select create, then I'm going to add to my vocabulary. We'll, so we'll see how that works by trying this with another column in just a minute. Ngrams size. So this Engrams are basically words that appear together. You've had a chance to read about them, I'm sure. So engrams right now are set at one, which means we're only going to evaluate individual words. So if I set this at two, that means I would include any bigrams in here. Uh, three trigrams, and as you might imagine, the greater the value of n that we set, the bigger our resulting data set and the number of features in the data set becomes. Next, we've got a weighting function. So this is one where we can say what measure do we want to include for our features that we identify. Binary weight is just a Boolean, uh, yes or no. Yes, it exists. One, it exists. No or zero, it does not exist. Uh, term frequency then would become a count of how many times it exists, zero, one, two, or more. Inverse document frequency, you don't see that used too much by itself, but uh, you can put that in there. You don't see this one used too much by itself. Instead, you'll see TFIDF, where you multiply term frequency times inverse document frequency to basically come up with a ranking of how often this word shows up in this particular document, the row that you're on, versus how often it appears on average in a document in the whole corpus, all right? We can say, um, specify a minimum and maximum word length, three and 25 here are the defaults. You probably don't want to include really short words uh, or super long words. Uh, those typically would only appear maybe once or twice in an entire corpus, a word that long, so it may not, it probably is not that useful to include. The minimum times that the word or engram appears in the corpus before we add it to the dictionary or to the feature list. The default is five, so that would be good for a pretty good sized corpus. We only have 1,200, so I'm gonna bump that down to three. And then the maximum ratio that will include. So again, this is, uh, we want to, avoid words that appear too rarely, but also avoid words that appear too frequently. So one here means we will include words up to words that appear in 100% of the documents. That would probably be too much for analysis. We don't have a whole lot of differentiating ability if it appears in every single document. So you may wanna trim that at maybe 0.75 so that if it appears in more than three quarters of the document and for a larger corpus, maybe even smaller. Okay, anything that appears more often than that, uh, you would um, 
cut out of your analysis. And then you can normalize uh, using an approach similar to the normalization functions or standardization functions you would use for your numeric features. All right, so we extract n-gram features from text. We're uh, using uh, it for the pre-processed preferred qualifications. Uh, let's submit it and see what happens. So let's see, let's uh, edit our node name. So extract n-gram. pre-processed, preferred qualifications. All right, let's run this and see what we get. All right, we're back. We can take a look at our n-grams, preview the data, and you can see we end up with two results. Let's look at the results data set, and then we'll also preview the result vocabulary. All right. So here's our result vocabulary, and you can see we basically have a list of our n-grams. This is pre-processed data, so we'll have some uh, you know word roots in here, and we just get a sample of this, but you can see we have 9,639 rows, so the number of available features grew once we started including n-grams up to three. And then we have uh, document frequency, how many times, how many documents did it show up in? Uh, what's our inverse document frequency based on that? Uh, and then we've got our results data set, which include our original features. And then we start getting a list of our features with the word or the n-gram telling us whether it shows up in that row or not. Uh, this would be the TF-IDF score. All right, so you can see this is very sparse data. Lots of zeros. But in here, occasionally, we'll find a TF-IDF score for one row, and in this case, NetPython and NetPython shell. So both of these probably came out of this document. Maybe the only one it showed up in, but we don't know because we're only getting a preview of the data here. All right, so we've got 9,648 columns. So if we exclude these original 10, that means we have 9,600 38 features uh, that are words, n-grams, uh, and, and their uh, actual TF-IDF scores. All right, so 1,250 rows. So that is what extract n-gram features from text gives us. Now let's see what happens if we decide to add another extract n-grams and add the, another one of our features to that. Okay, so we're gonna take our results vocabulary and bring that into our input vocabulary. Our results data set, we'll bring that in. So this time, yeah, we're gonna put it back into create mode because we want to add new words if they do show up. We'll leave everything else the same. Uh, this time we'll choose a different field. 
So we have uh, pre-processed -pro pre preferred qualifications. Let's go ahead and do responsibilities this time instead. So pre-processed responsibilities. I would imagine that our minimum qualifications and preferred qualifications will be reasonably similar. So let's see if the responsibilities gives us a little bit more information. All right, so we'll run this and see what we get. All right, so here we have our finished job. Let's preview the data, see what our results, data set, and vocabulary look like. And yeah, you can see we have 23,000 plus columns now, which means we added a lot more uh, information to the data set. That means our results vocabulary is also going to have, uh, it has 13,000 rows. Okay, so our new vocabulary is built from uh, just the pill, so we can analyze our vocabulary separately, 13,000 new rows in our responsibilities, but the results data set now gives us the columns from both the original data and the new data. So we've got our pre preferred qualifications. And then if we were to continue all the way out here, we would have another set of uh, features for our preferred or our pre-processed responsibilities. So we can stack on features to our data set and our vocabulary using this approach with extract and gram features. All right, so let's go back to the reading module and see what we'd like to do next.